Nina, to, to join us in this sort of TV studio style setup that we've got here. Um, we did intend to have some videos this evening from Hazel Jackson. She very kindly sent them over to us from Argentina around about lunchtime today in between flights, games and, and all sorts. Um, after a couple of weeks of, of nagging by myself and Alice. Um, so she very kindly did those videos for us. Due to some WinTech IT restrictions, um, our TVs here don't have sound. Um, so that's not great for a video interview, obviously. Uh, one of the sort of highlights of those video interviews, Pride's very kindly sponsored them for us. So on our Facebook, we ran a competition and we picked a winner and they get a bag of uh, Pride's Easy Feed as their prize. So thanks very much for Prides for coming along. Thanks very much for providing that prize. Um, and we will distribute those videos via Facebook and YouTube for you to, to enjoy. Um, because Hazel really extended on this idea of player fitness for us, which is, has sort of been a little theme that we're trying to develop through this evening. Um, so without further ado, I'd just like to welcome Nina to come sit up here. And if you could all clap, because you're polite people, that'd be great. <laughs> Right, we sort of prepared this over a cup of tea the other day, so we'll, um, we'll see how we go. Thanks very much for coming, Good. really appreciate it. Um, so we're going to talk about women's polo. Um, it's come a long way in the past few years. What do you think has been the catalyst for this? Um, well, I mean, in England and I think all around the world, the women's sector of the sport has been the fastest growing sector for a number of years. And I think that is attributed to a, a lot of things. Um, but I think just a wider accessibility for everyone coming in. And for me, I've seen there's a lot more patrons who are professional women who are playing and have their own money and are putting teams together and are playing like that. And that has created more spaces for players, which has mean more people are coming in. And it's now just a bit of a snowball effect that um, it's getting bigger and bigger. There's lots of players coming to a higher level of um, playing and we're able to play all around the world. Um, so for professional players, you know, like myself and Hazel, Hazel travels 12 months of the year and is constantly working, which means that there's just more opportunities for women players now. Cool. Um, in order to grow women's pole in the future, what do you think the sport needs? I think we're at quite a critical point um, for the sport in that, like I said, we, we've, we've got really big and I think to carry this forward we need to keep moving in the right direction. Um, I think the introduction of the Women's Open in Argentina um, being played on the same day as the, as the Men's Open has been a, a huge thing. Um, to be able to have platforms like that to play on in Palermo is fantastic. The same with the American Open, the British Open running alongside the Gold Cup in England. I think these sort of opportunities we've still got to, we've got to keep and we've got to provide good polo to play for it to carry on. I think um, now there's a lot more streaming. Um, I've just finished watching the Texan Open in America, the Women's Open, um, which was, Hazel was out playing that, which is 20 gold polo. Um, being able to have access to watch those games, um, see what girls are playing out there and follow the sport, I think will, will, will enable more sponsors to get involved and keep the sport growing at the rate it's going. Cool. Right, are there any tools or devices that you would like to see integrated into Polo to help players succeed? Um, we talked about it briefly the other day, something that I'm really interested in is, um, as a sort of coaching tool, is a swing analysis. Um, and I'd, I'd like to see, see that developed a bit more so that for me as a player, but also when I'm coaching and, and helping people, I think if you can actually see yourself in sort of slow motion and, and get a close breakdown of your swing and what you do well or badly, I think it can make a big difference because a small change can make a big difference in your swing. So I'd like to see more tools like that that I can utilize and use for both myself and, and for when I'm coaching cool. up and coming players. Great stuff. Um, right, in what capacity do you see technology impacting on modern polo and how do you think it could improve the game as a whole? Um, I think there's a lot that I think there's a lot that we can still do um, in polo where we're uh, behind other sports. Sp JP's brother um, was a professional rugby player, 
um, and listening to him and talk about the access they have to um, sort of the technical side of the sport after every game they'd come in and they sit down and they watch they uh, taken through all their statistics how many tackles they've done how many balls they've dropped how many tries they've done and they each player is given a breakdown of, of how they performed and I you know that I think something along those lines would help us a lot to be able to see how your performance has been I think you know every player will find that some days everything goes really well for them and some days things don't at all and I think it'd be quite interesting to look at that a bit closer and be able to see perhaps why that's happening whether there's something that contributes to the to you not scoring the goals or not hitting the penalties or whatever it is Polo is difficult because you've got so many so many different parts to it um, that it's quite hard to narrow it down but I think the more data you have and the more information you have would be helpful Cool. Great stuff. That's all our pre-prepared questions. Are you okay if we just take one yep. or two from elsewhere? Yep. Anyone got any questions? Oh, stunned into silence. <laughs> Clearly answered everything. <laughs> You've, you're always good for one free. Really <laughs> um, so you do some coaching of other polo players. Yes. Um, had, from my own perspective, I, I know that it's things that you can pick up as a coach that helps your own game. Uh, how do you find that coaching uh, others helps continue to build your game? I think you have to, const you have to be very self-critical, you have to be quite self-aware of your own talents and your own um, fallbacks, what you're not good at, and work very hard on, on those. And I think, um, I think as, a, as a female player, the technical side of my game is very important. I don't have the natural strength um, physiologically to rely on, as some guys do if their swings don't go well. I think it's very important for women players to have as good a technical swing as they can to make up for that fact um, and I think you have to work hard on every aspect of it and I think coaching just as you're saying things to someone else you're thinking actually I should probably pay attention to that more myself um, so it keeps you more aware self-aware I think and I think that's quite important. Do you recommend that other players start coaching? Um, I think I, yes, I would, but I think it's not, some people just can't just can't do it. You know, some people are so natural that they don't really know what they're doing or how they're doing it. They just rely on their natural ability. And yes, I think they can still examine themselves a bit more closely, but I think it's hard for them to translate to someone else how to how to be how to improve or how to get better because for them they just make those self changes naturally and they check themselves naturally. For any more, should we leave it there? Probably got one. Yeah. Have you ever had a, like a? You talk about a lot of individual coaching and all that sort of stuff, but when it follows a team sport, and I don't know, as a sort of young player, I know sort of take now in Kaiga Academy about what you do and what, where you should be to certain plays and stuff like that. But I don't know, I've never really had much of that. I mean, I've had a bit from my family, but I don't know, have you had anyone in your sort of upbringing or? coaching as you've been playing polo that's had, had an effect for you in terms of the overall team? Definitely. There's been a lot of individual people who've really helped and I think that that's something in polo that we probably don't have enough of at the sort of lower level or grassroots level is someone to tell you, you know, because when you're out there sometimes you can't sort of see the wood for the trees, you know. It's, yeah. I think I'm quite good at helping the other people on my team but actually can't really see what, what you're doing wrong. And that's why it's been very helpful for me often with John Paul on the sideline watching. He can say, look, you're doing really well with everybody else, but you need to concentrate on this and you need to concentrate on that. Um, and I think having someone to direct you and help you is really important. Yes, it comes down to you when you're out there on the field, but in between chuckers being told that maybe you're making the same mistake over and over again is helpful to then make sure you don't make that in the next chucker. Um, and I think improving your game as a whole will definitely come from having someone outside of the field helping you with what you may be not doing as well as you could. <clears throat> Any more? Or should we call it that? Right, let's call it that. Um, thanks very much everyone for coming, thanks very much Nina for doing this for us, really appreciate it. Um, thanks very much to JP and Kit and every other player who's put up with us this season, or last season and will put up with us this season, um, whether you like it or not.
Thanks very much to Ainsley Polo for everything you've done for us. It's always great to have um, a catch up with Kel and Lucy um, and have a drink or two as well. Um, and yeah, thanks very much to everyone for coming along. Really appreciate you taking the time to be here. Hopefully you've learned something new. Um, if you're a sports scientist, I encourage you to speak to a polo player whilst they're here. If you're a polo player and you'd like to, speak to a sports scientist or engineer whilst they're here as well. Um, but hopefully this isn't the last of these um, and we can keep this communication going. It's been great. Thanks very much. Thank you.